Hi, blockchain and cryptography enthusiasts. Welcome to ZK Marek, where I explain the inner workings of all things crypto. Before we dive in, we want to thank the Ethereum Ecosystem Support Program and VLayer for their invaluable support in making this video. This is the final episode of ZK Marek Season 1, where all threads of our story intertwine. So, elliptic curves, trusted setup, KZG, Merkle trees, and even blobs. With accumulated knowledge, we can now fully comprehend the new data structure. Verkal trees. Last time, we explored Merkle trees, the cornerstone of Ethereum data structure. Quick refresher, Ethereum in each block stores four Merkle Patricia tries, state, transaction, receipt, and withdrawals. Each try stores key value data for their specific purpose. For example, for state root, key is an address, and value is a four-item array including storage root. Yep, a try inside a try, storing smart contract variables. Ethereum Merkle Patricia try uses extension nodes, branches, and leaves. On average, the state Merkle Patricia try is nine levels deep. To create a proof, we need to calculate up to 16 32-byte hashes per level. So a single proof weighs up to almost 4 kilobytes. Proving 1,000 accounts, nearly 4 megabytes. That's a lot, especially by the blockchain standards. If you want to learn more about Merkle trees, check out the full episode about them. So the question is, can we make a more efficient tree? Yes, with a little help of vector commitment. As you may remember, we explored how to use the KZG commitment scheme as a vector commitment. Let's quickly recap the core ideas. The prover commits to a data vector without revealing it and sends a commitment C to the verifier. Now, to prove that the vector has value AI, at the certain index I, the prover generates a proof and sends it along with the opening. This proof convinces the verifier that the committed vector really has an item AI at index I without revealing the entire vector. If you want the full picture on polynomial commitments, watch the full episode and our deep dive on trusted setup. For KZG vector commitments, check out the Blobs episode. Before we dive into vertical trees, let's take a moment to talk about the cryptographic tools they rely on. Vertical trees need a vector commitment scheme. And one proven approach is to utilize the KZG polynomial commitment scheme. That scheme uses the BLS12381 elliptic curve, defined over a large prime field called FP, where P is roughly 381 bits long. The committed vector elements belong to the scalar field FR, and R is about 255 bits. That means EC points are up to almost 48 bytes big, and scalars up to almost 32 bytes big. This curve supports two subgroups, commonly referred to as G1 and G2. Both of them are needed to define pairings which are used for KZG verification, but here's the catch. Ethereum's vertical tree current implementation proposal doesn't use KZG, mainly to avoid the need for a trusted setup and pairing-based verification. Instead, it uses inner product argument commitment, IPA for short, over a Bandersnatch curve. This curve is defined over a BLS12381 scalar field. That means the base field for Bandersnatch is smaller compared to BLS12381's FP. That makes its curve points much lighter, as they weigh just under 32 bytes. Scalars, which are used for the vector values we commit to, belong to the Bandersnatch scalar field, which is up to almost 253-bit field. So the scalars also remain under 32 bytes. The IPA commitment to the vector is just a single elliptic curve point, like in KZG. IPA proofs, however, consist of several elliptic curve points. So while the commitment itself is constant sized, the proof size grows logarithmically as the vector size grows. Let's look at these sizes one more time. We are committing to the vector of scalar field elements in both KZG and IPA. The opening, which is a single scalar field element, is under 32 bytes. Commitments and proofs, however, are elliptic curve points. KZG uses 48-byte elliptic curve points. For both commitment and the proof, 
The IPA, in contrast, uses smaller elliptic curve points, just up to 32 bytes each. And the proof includes two log of vector size of them. And perhaps the most important difference, KZG requires a trusted setup and pairing-based verification, which is computationally expensive. IPA commitments do not. And now, finally, let's get into the structure of vertical trees. To build a simple vertical tree, we start with a vector. For starters, say it has 16 elements. The function that updates the tree, for example an insert function which creates the vertical tree, acts as a prover in the commitment scheme. A prover is in charge of modifying the data set and creates a commitment which acts like a parent node. On the other hand, a function which verifies that an item belongs to the data structure acts like a verifier in the commitment scheme. Verifiers can check that a number belongs to the vector using a commitment C0, proof pi0, and the opening. Remember that commitment is a single elliptic curve point. Because of that, the parent node size is not affected by the number of children, so the vector can have a lot more elements than 16. Ethereum vertical trees propose to use 256 children per node. You might have noticed that such a simple vertical tree is similar to an Ethereum blob. And you would be right! And what about creating the vertical tree, which has multiple levels? Let's see how it's built. We've already started with a commitment C0 to 256 values. What we call an internal node of the vertical tree actually holds 256 such commitments. C0 through C255. Each of these is a parent to 256 values. What if we wanted to commit to such an array of commitments? Up to this point, we've only committed to values that are scalar field elements. But now we face a new challenge. How do we commit to elliptic curve points? For example, in KZG, a commitment is an elliptic curve point that takes up about 381 bits, while the scalar field only supports 255-bit values. Similarly, in IPA, the commitments are 255 bits, but the scalar field is only 253 bits. It turns out that in both schemes, the EC points are too big to commit to. So we need to hash each commitment and truncate the hash down to the size of a scalar field. We commit to these hashes with a new parent commitment. And again, there will be a full internal node, which holds 256 such commitments each corresponding to 256 children commitments below it. Finally, we produce a single root commitment by committing to 256 truncated children hashes. This is the final parent node of our vertical tree. With simple math, we can estimate how much data a multi-level vertical tree can handle. And it's impressive. One commitment in the vertical tree holds 256 values which is 2 to the 8th power, while for 3 levels, the number is 2 to 24th. And 4-level deep vertical tree offers more than enough space to squeeze in all of the Ethereum accounts. Now the question is, what about the proofs? As we saw in a simple example, to verify that 85 belong to the tree with a root commitment C00, we will need to generate the proof pi0. Now, what if 85 belong to a multi-level tree? First, to prove that 85 belongs to C00, we need that commitment, opening, and pi0. On the next level, we want to prove that that commitment belongs to a parent commitment. So again, we need a parent, opening, which is the hash of the original commitment, and additionally, another proof, pi1. Finally, at the top level, the prover must show that this parent commitment belongs to the root. This involves the root commitment, a hash of C01, which is an opening, and yet another proof, pi2. So, in total, to build a vertical proof that 85 belongs to the tree, we'd need three opening proofs and two commitments. Openings and root commitment, which are needed for verification, are public. Depending on the choice of commitment scheme, Vertical proofs have different sizes. If we use KZG commitment scheme, commitments and opening proofs are elliptic curve points, 48 bytes each. 
For each level, we have one proof. So by taking three proofs and two commitments, we land in a total of just over 240 bytes. For IPA, the commitments are up to almost 32 bytes each. And the opening proofs consist of multiple elliptic curve points. For 256 vector elements, we'd need 16 curve points, so up to almost 512 bytes per opening proof. Opening proofs are clearly the biggest in size. Three of them are around 1.5 kilobytes. So the vertical proof in total weights around 1.6 kilobytes. That is much bigger compared to the KZG setup. But with a catch of trusted setup assumption and pairing based verification, which brings extra complexity. Fortunately, no matter what the vector commitment is, this can be simplified to single proof and single verification, regardless of tree depth. How? It all revolves around multi-proofs. For our three-level vertical tree, a vertical proof consisted of three opening proofs and two commitments. A multi-proof is a new opening proof pie generated for another commitment D, which is constructed by aggregating the commitments on a vertical tree path. How exactly? We need to take a deeper look at vector commitments. Each commitment corresponds to a data vector. Regardless of the scheme, KZG or IPA, we always represent that vector as a polynomial. Then the commitment openings are as follows. The evaluation of P0 at X0 is A255. P1 at X1 is equal to the hash of C00 and the third polynomial. P2 of X2 equaling the hash of C01. Each of them can be represented as a point on a different curve. But let's focus as an example on the first opening. P0 of X0 is A255. Now we can construct a new polynomial as a difference between P0 of X and this value I255. But notice that this new polynomial has a root at X equals X0. If a polynomial has a root, we can present it in a factored form. This brings us to the quotient polynomial, which is this new polynomial divided by x minus x0. If we divide it, we get a non-zero polynomial, which can serve as a proof that p of x evaluates to a0 at coordinate x0. See our KZG episode to learn why it works. And now, let's get back to our multi-proofs. For each polynomial in our vertical tree, we will construct the quotient corresponding to respective opening, and we will sum those quotients. Additionally, we multiply quotients in the sum by random factor r. This is how a random linear combination of quotients is created. A source of randomness for r is a hash of all of our inputs, commitments and openings. This way we get a new polynomial g of x, which aggregates our inputs. Now, if we have a polynomial, we can commit to it, using KZG, IPA or some other polynomial commitment. This results in a commitment D. And depending on the scheme, we construct a single opening proof for some opening G of S, where S is another random coordinate. And this particular proof pi is a heart of our vertical multi-proof. Now, instead of verifying three paths, we will verify only once. Does it sound too complicated? We got you. Let's see a piece of code. Here, we construct a simplified function, generate multi-proof, for a free level tree. It takes in the following arguments, the index xi of the value we want to prove, the value ai at that index, and a vertical path represented by two commitments, c0 and c1. It also takes the list of polynomials that represent the committed data at each tree level. First, we compute a challenge scalar r. This value is derived using a hash of all inputs, ensuring it's pseudorandom and binds all data to this proof. Then we set up the indices and values that we'll be opening, the user's own data at xi, and the two hash commitments, hash of c0 and hash of c1. Here's the core idea. We construct a new polynomial gx, which is a random linear combination of quotient polynomials for each of our three values. For each pair, xi, vi, and polynomial pi, we compute the quotient. So using the fact that each polynomial subtracted by the value should be divisible by x minus xi. This is the part that proves each opening. 
so each polynomial at x i evaluates to v i. But we also multiply each term by increasing powers of r. This avoids cancellation and binds the values cryptographically. Next, we commit to g using our standard polynomial commitment scheme, kzg, ipa, etc., producing commitment d. We now choose a new random coordinate s, again using a hash of all previous inputs, and evaluate g of s. Finally, we generate the opening proof pi for this evaluation using our commitment d. And that's it. This single proof pi now serves as a multi-proof for the values ai, hash of c0, and hash of c1. So how do Merkle trees compare to Verkle trees in real-world usage? First, let's talk about depth. In a standard Merkle tree, we typically need about 9 levels to represent Ethereum's state, which has around half a million leaves. In contrast, a Verkle tree with an RID of 256 can represent that same state in just 4 levels. That's because Verkle trees are much wider. Each node can have up to 256 children. What about proof sizes? A Merkle proof isn't tiny. To verify a single key, you might need to reveal up to 16 hashes per level, each 32 bytes. Multiply that across 9 levels, and a single Merkle proof can be close to 4 kilobytes in size. Now, imagine proving 1,000 accounts. That adds up to almost 4 megabytes of data. Verkle proofs, in contrast, scale much better. Even with the heavier math of inner product arguments or pairings, they're more efficient. For one key, the IPA-based Verkle proof is around 600 bytes, and KZG-based Verkle proof, 200 bytes. This is where the IPA scheme really shines. In a four-level Verkle tree, the worst-case proof is where each of the 1,000 keys follows a separate path, thanks to smaller 32-byte commitments compared to 48 bytes in KZG the total proof size with IPA stays lower, around 72 kilobytes versus 109 kilobytes for KZG. Even though the IPA multiproof is larger, around 512 bytes, that overhead becomes negligible in large batch proofs. All because of horizontal multi-proofs, which let us prove multiple values across different branches with a single aggregated proof. We only pay once for the proof, and the rest is just commitments. That's why vertical trees can be the future of Ethereum scalability. Smaller witness sizes, faster syncs, and fewer constraints on validator bandwidth. Thanks for watching ZK Marek channel.